State of Idaho Plaintiff v. Lori Noreen Ballot, a.k.a. Lori Noreen Daybell, Defendant. Count 1, Conspiracy to Commit First-Degree Murder and Grand Theft by Deception. Count 2, First-Degree Murder. Count 3, Conspiracy to Commit First-Degree Murder and Grand Theft by Deception. Count 4, First-Degree Murder. Count 5, Conspiracy to Commit First-Degree Murder. The crimes are unimaginable. Lori Vallow Daybell stood trial for the murder of her own children, 16-year-old Tylee and 7-year-old JJ. She was also accused of killing Tammy Daybell, the wife of her current husband, Chad. The judge in the case did not allow cameras in the Idaho courtroom during testimony, but we have audio and transcripts of the proceedings. Here was prosecutor Lindsay Blake. Money, power, and sex. That's what this case is about. It didn't matter what obstacle she had to remove to get what she wanted. And if it was a person, it didn't matter who. Lori was a beauty contestant. Anybody you spoke to who knew Lori back then said that she was like the mother of the year. The problem really seems to have started when Lori started following Chad Daybell. Chad was a podcaster and author of doomsday novels. Then in late 2019, Lori's two children mysteriously disappeared. Meantime, Lori and Chad are on the beach in Hawaii having the time of their lives. They get married and they wouldn't talk to police at all and they wouldn't tell anybody where the kids were. Even after Lori was arrested, she still refused to say anything about where the kids were. How come you're not telling anybody where your kids are? People have looked all over the country for these kids. Months after vanishing into thin air, the remains of J.J. Vallo and Tylee Ryan were found buried here in Chad Daybell's backyard. What we have gathered was that Chad had this belief that some people who were on this earth weren't really the people they were supposed to be. They were zombies. And the only way to release their spirits was to kill the bodies. And if that's not disturbing enough, Lori started referring to her children as zombies. She had this um, grading system where she could read people's auras and they were either dark or light. And she had described Tylee as having a dark spirit. I feel like she's kind of a monster. But defense attorney Jim Archibald claimed there was no way for Lori to have committed the crimes. Lori Vallow was in her own apartment in Rexburg, Idaho, when J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan died, and Lori was in Hawaii when Tammy Daybell died. I've thought a lot about why this story hits such a chord with a wide variety of people. And I think it's because these kids, and then when you throw in the cult aspect of this, we've certainly seen movies with all of this, but I'm not sure we've ever seen anything like this in real life, in true crime. In regards to count one of the amended indictment, answer, guilty. Count two, guilty. Count three, guilty. Count four, guilty. Count five, guilty. Count seven, guilty. Tell me where your kids are. Did you do something to your children? Where are your children? Welcome back, Lori. Where are your kids? Anything you want to say, Lori? Lori? Beginning in 2019, Lori Vallow Daybell spent months denying her missing children were in danger. Many, including her sister Summer Shiflet, believed her at the time. Something's not adding up here. Where are they? Where is JJ and Tylee? It's a great question. Mm -hmm. We would love to know the answer to that. We don't know, but we know 
We were very confident that Lori would never harm her children, ever. But during four weeks of testimony, the prosecution chipped away at the facade of the former beauty contestant until it exposed Lori Vallow Daybell for the person it claimed she really was. Prosecutors have painted a picture of somebody who was ruthless. Morgan Lowe is an investigative reporter and CBS News consultant. Somebody who would do anything to get what she wants. According to the prosecution, Lori was a master puppeteer pulling the strings in a heinous murder plot that left three innocent people dead. Her 16-year-old daughter, Tylee Ryan, her seven-year-old son, J.J. Vallow, and Tammy Daybell, Chad Daybell's wife of almost 30 years. It didn't matter what obstacle she had to remove to get what she wanted. 48 Hours has been following the twisted saga of the so-called cult mom and her paramour, Chad Daybell, since the story broke in 2019, months before the remains of her two children were discovered in shallow graves in Chad Daybell's backyard. When we started, it was almost inconceivable to friends like April Raymond that she would harm her children. She did everything for JJ, everything for Tylee, they were the center of her world. And so I'm not sure what hijacked that priority. April met Lori in 2015 in Hawaii. At the time, Lori was married to businessman Charles Vallow. The couple were raising two children, Tylee, Lori's teenage daughter from a former marriage, and their adopted son, JJ, who was diagnosed with autism. JJ was very difficult to take care of. So I really admired how patient she was with him and how much care she took of him. His big sister was just as devoted to him, says Tylee's best friend, Baisia Itaaiho. I loved being around JJ and Tylee. Tylee was really protective over JJ, and she was kind of like another mama to him. Are you taking a video of my child? Your child? My child. I just kind of loved how she would just play with him and just always have like a really good time with him. And I really love JJ. He's the sweetest soul I've ever met. But around 2017, friends say Lori's relationships with her kids began to shift. About the time she started reading the books of Chad Daybell. I've recently released my autobiography. Daybell was a former grave digger turned doomsday novelist and podcaster from Rexburg, Idaho. He tapped into this prepper element out there, people who wanted to prepare for Armageddon. Lori met Chad for the first time in 2018 at a conference in St. George, Utah. The first time Chad met Lori, he told her that they had been married in a past life. He said he was James and she was Elena and that they had lived this biblical life in the past. And instead of scaring her off, that seems to have attracted her. Even though Lori was still married to Charles Vallow and Chad was married to the mother of his five children, Tammy Daybell, Lori's friend Melanie Gibb testified the two soon began an affair. Did Lori ever tell you directly that she and Chad would meet at hotels or motels? Yes. Did Lori ever indicate to you whether or not she and Chad were engaged in an affair? She would just share that they were intimate. Witnesses testified that Lori took on Chad's extreme religious beliefs, says Morgan Lowe. Lori believed that she was chosen to lead the 144,000 after the apocalypse to lead the survivors of the human race to an eternal life while the rest of society burned. She also believed she had been appointed another, more ominous role, says April. Part of her mission on Earth was to eliminate the darkness, the demonic, uh, the evil. April says one of those evil spirits, according to Lori, was her then husband, Charles Vallow. The way she had explained it to me about Charles was that Charles was already dead and that there was a demon living inside of him. 
For the first time, we heard at trial that Lori held what she called casting ceremonies. It involved getting into a circle with other like-minded followers and casting out dark spirits from people, getting rid of demons. Lori's friend, Zulema Pastenas, attended several of these castings. There are certain spirits that can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. Here she is on the stand talking about one of the demons Lori claimed was living inside Charles. And what was that, that spirit or demon's name? I believe they called him Ned. Ned Schneider, to be precise. Won't you come over here? In January of 2019, Charles was so spooked by Lori's ramblings about the demon named Ned, he called police. What did she say yesterday? She said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles. Their conversation was recorded on the officer's body cam. Okay. So what makes her a danger to herself and she to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me. She threatened to murder you? Yes. In the winter of 2019, Charles changed the beneficiary of his $1 million life insurance policy from Lori to his sister, Kay Woodcock, JJ's biological grandmother. After almost 13 years of marriage, Charles filed for divorce. She's like, she's scared the crap out of me. Charles Vallow had good reason to be scared. On the morning of July 11, 2019, Charles Vallow went to the Chandler, Arizona home of his estranged wife, Lori Vallow, to pick up JJ and take him to school. He goes into the house. Lori and Tylee and JJ are there, and so is Alex Cox. Alex Cox, Lori's brother. At trial, Lori's friend Zulema Pastenis, who would later marry Alex, testified that Chad had assigned him a mission ordained by God. Chad had told him that he was going to be a warrior, a defender, and the sole purpose for him coming to this earth was so that he could be Lori's protector and defender. Did Alex believe this? Absolutely. Shortly after Charles entered Lori's home that summer morning in 2019, Alex Cox, the defender, shot him dead. 911, where is your emergency? At 8.36 a.m., Alex calmly called 911. Can you see breathing? I can't tell. He said, I need to report a shooting. I shot my brother-in-law in, in self-defense. And is he hurt or is he alive? Or? Yeah, there's blood. He's, he's not moving. The police arrived and shot this video of Alex on the curb outside the home. Alex told them Charles and Lori got into a fight. So you both, so you get in an argument, what is it over? Well, it's over, my sister. He was, he was uh, getting physical with her, so my niece came out. Alex told them he got between Charles and Lori and shot Charles in the chest when Charles charged at him. At some point, Lori, Tylee, and JJ got into the car and left. Lori takes JJ to school, and she comes back later with Tylee. Police body cam caught the moment. Tylee's face was blurred because she was a minor. How long have you lived here? Like three weeks. Oh, geez. Yeah, okay. That's why the neighbors don't know us. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> like, hi, neighbor, sorry. What was striking about the footage that we saw was that there's no remorse, there's no, oh my gosh, my husband's dead. Lori, Alex, and Tylee were questioned at the police headquarters. All told similar stories of self-defense and were sent home. Three days later, Chad and Lori were exchanging steamy texts. Here's FBI agent Doug Hart reading one on the stand. I need so badly to just gently kiss you for hours. It would likely lead to other activities. Likely or luckily, it would luckily lead to nakedness. But prosecutors say the lovers were in for a big surprise. They were about to find out that Charles had changed the beneficiary of that $1 million life insurance policy. Here's Detective Nathan Duncan reading Lori's text to Chad after she found out. 
I just got the letter from the insurance company saying that I am not the beneficiary. It's a spear through my heart. This is one of the strongest points that prosecutors have made, is that Lori was motivated by money. She wanted Charles's money. According to prosecutors, Lori started drawing the Social Security death benefits JJ received from his father, Charles Vallow. She moved with her two kids to Rexburg, Idaho, not far from where Chad Daybell lived with his wife, Tammy. Lori's brother, Alex Cox, her designated defender, moved into the same complex. He was there to take care of the problems. Prosecutors alleged Lori's first problem was her 16-year-old daughter, Tylee Ryan. According to Zalema, Lori told her that a demon named Hillary had taken over Tylee's body. Now, if somebody is possessed by a demon, are, are those people dangerous? They're considered to be dark and to bring only bad things to happen. Yeah, so yes, would be dangerous. These are the last known pictures of Tylee Ryan. On September 8th, 2019, she was with Lori, JJ, and Alex at Yellowstone National Park. The 16-year-old was never seen again. Tylee was JJ's protector. Once she was gone, JJ had nobody. He had nobody to protect him or watch out for him. Just two weeks later, JJ Vallow went missing. This photo of JJ wearing red pajamas was taken on September 22nd, 2019. It is the last known photo of him. Melanie Gibb, who was staying at Lori's house that evening, says she saw Alex take JJ upstairs, she believes, to Lori's room. But the little boy was nowhere to be seen the next morning. Is that when she told you JJ was a zombie? Yes. Melanie Gibb told prosecutors Alex Cox believed JJ was a zombie as well. He said he 100% believed it. According to their religious teachings, a zombie had to be killed. The body had to die. And the body count was climbing. According to prosecutors, Lori and Chad had identified another evil spirit in the way. What we learned from witness after witness is that Chad told some people that his wife was not going to be around much longer and that he was going to have a life before Tammy and a life after Tammy. The week after JJ was last seen, and two months before the world would learn that the children were missing, Lori was planning her fifth wedding. At trial, prosecutors called an FBI specialist to the stand. Did you learn whether or not uh, there was ever a successful purchase of wedding rings? There were, on October 2nd, 2019. There was just one problem. Chad was still married to Tammy Daybell. But that was about to change. Garth Daybell is one of five Daybell children. If I was asleep and I heard a thump and heard my dad yell, Garth, Garth, come quick. Garth found his mother, 49-year-old Tammy Daybell, lying half on the bed, half on the floor. I just ran over and picked her up and put her back on the bed said to my dad, I said, I think she's dead. The coroner initially determined Tammy died of natural causes and the family declined an autopsy. Chad's neighbor, Alice Gilbert, testified that a week later, he had already moved on. We asked him how he was doing and he said, actually, I'm doing really good. And that he'd met the woman he was going to marry. Did you find, uh, did it surprise you that he seemed to be doing so well? Yes, we were shocked. Alice and her husband, Todd Gilbert, met Lori shortly after. They came to the house and his arm was around her and 
She was giggling and laughing, and they looked like teenagers. Alice says the conversation turned to children. Then Chad said, and she recently just lost a daughter. So I told her, oh, I'm sorry. And she said, thank you. This is significant because at that time, Lori is still telling her sister and everybody else that the kids were okay. This is like a slip up, an early slip up, an admission against interest here. It did not seem to worry Chad and Lori on their big day. 17 days after Tammy Daybell's death, there was Lori dancing on the beach in Hawaii as her new husband strummed his ukulele, exchanging those rings. According to investigators, the cost of the wedding trip was courtesy of the groom's dead wife's life insurance. Little do they know that the clock is now ticking. Soon after the newlyweds returned to Idaho, the Rexburg police came knocking on Lori's door, looking for JJ. His grandmother, Kay Woodcock, had asked authorities to do a welfare check. The conversation was recorded on the officer's body cam. Here's Lori talking about JJ. He's with one of my friends in Arizona. Who's the friend he's with? My friend Melanie. Chad called that friend, Melanie Gibb, who testified he asked her not to pick up the phone when the police called. Later, she says Lori asked her to lie and tell the police that JJ was staying with her in Arizona. And I felt in a very weird and uncomfortable position and I really did not know what to do. At first, Melanie Gibb wasn't forthcoming to the police, but 12 days later, she made a call to Lori and Chad and secretly recorded it. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. Chad said they couldn't tell her where JJ was for her own security. If you knew, that puts you in a danger. Melanie handed that secret recording to authorities and investigators launched a nationwide search, but not just for JJ. They would soon learn that his big sister, Tylee, was also missing. A search for two children from Idaho. Listen up, you may know something. The children mysteriously disappeared. It was huge news, especially to Lori's new stepchildren. When did you know that she had two kids? I first heard of her children when a detective came to my work and asked me about them. I had never heard of them before that point. So even after your father weds Lori, you didn't know that there were two kids in the picture at that point. I did not. As the hunt for the children intensified, Lori and Chad again headed to Hawaii, but the honeymoon was over. He's about leaving, sir. Kauai authorities caught up with Lori by the pool. She would be arrested on child abandonment charges and extradited to Idaho. Please be seated. Chad, the loyal husband, by her side. But now Chad himself was under suspicion. With the children missing, that's when the police took a closer look at the death of Tammy. Her body had been exhumed on December 11th, 2019. The Utah State Medical Examiner immediately saw bruising on her body, and he determined that Tammy died of asphyxiation. The medical examiner testified that that bruising was consistent with somebody being restrained, meaning she was held down and suffocated. Alex's wife, Zulema Pastenas, says that when she heard about Tammy, she started pressing Alex for answers. By then, she says Lori and Chad had cut Alex off. Here she is on the stand, talking about when she asked Alex what was happening. What did he say? He, he was very quiet and unresponsive, and then he said, um, I think I'm being their fall guy. I said, a fall guy for what? What is it that, that you have done? What, what have you done that you would be the fall guy for? And then he said, either I am a man of God or I am not. Here's the prosecutor addressing that mysterious statement. 
What exactly Alex meant by this or what he knew, we may never know because Alex Cox died the next day on December 12th of 2019. In a truth is stranger than fiction plot twist, the man Lori and Chad designated her defender, her brother, Alex Cox, suddenly dropped dead. An autopsy determined of natural causes. That was a jaw dropping moment right before his death. It does look like Alex was second guessing what he had done and why Chad and Lori had asked him to do what he did. They say dead men don't talk, but this one did. Alex Cox's cell phone harbored a tale of horrors waiting to be discovered in Chad Daybell's backyard. And it would give prosecutors the evidence they had been waiting for. On June 9th, 2020, law enforcement descended on Chad Daybell's backyard. According to the prosecution, Alex Cox's cell phone data placed him here for two hours the day after Tylee Ryan was last seen. Authorities later discovered her remains in the same spot. It was an area the Daybell family once used as a pet cemetery. It now contained Tylee's badly burned remains. She had been dismembered. Detective Ray Hermosillo took the stand and described finding what was left of Tylee. There was a partial human skull underneath the melted bucket. Alex's cell phone led them to another section of the yard about 50 yards away under a shade tree. Investigators started digging. They removed a layer of rocks. Beneath the rocks, they found wooden planks Below that, a layer of black plastic. One of the crime scene investigators cut a hole in the top of this plastic and beneath the black plastic was some white plastic, like plastic bag. And they cut through that. And that's when we were able to see what appeared to be brown human hair uh, sticking out from the white plastic. It was JJ. He was still dressed in his red pajamas and covered head to toe in duct tape. Several layers of duct tape from his chin to his forehead area. Uh, his arms were duct taped with several layers of duct tape. His feet were also duct taped and bound. Forensic pathologist Garth Warren testified how JJ had died. I determined the cause of death to be asphyxia by a plastic bag over the head and duct tape covering the mouth. It's unimaginable what his last minutes of life were like. Experts couldn't determine Tylee's cause of death because of the condition of her remains. But prosecutors alleged the way in which both children were killed aligned with Chad and Lori's teachings about demons and zombies. Zulema testifies that if they're trying to cast a demon or a zombie out of somebody, there's two minutes after the casting where another demon can enter that person. And the only way to prevent that is to burn the person or bind them. Tylee was burned, JJ was bound. Despite all the talk of zombies and demons, prosecutors argued that Lori's true motive to murder her kids was much more mundane. Kylie had already lost her father and she received social security benefits because of that. Kylie had money, Lori wanted it, Kylie's gone. JJ also was entitled to social security benefits. The defendant didn't wanna to have to take care of JJ anymore. She wanted the money, JJ's gone. While the prosecution's case was mostly circumstantial, DNA matching Tylee's profile was found on a shovel and pickaxe in a garage on the Daybell property. A forensic specialist testified they also found a finger and palm print belonging to Alex Cox on one of the black plastic bags that covered JJ. 
Investigators also found one strand of hair that was stuck in the tape that was around the bag. DNA showed that that hair belonged to Lori Vallow. That's significant because that's really the only physical evidence they have that ties Lori to JJ at the time of his death. Some of the most powerful testimony in the prosecution's case came from Lori's own family. They played an emotional jailhouse phone call between Lori and her only surviving child, son, Colby Ryan. You ripped my heart out and you ripped out everyone in this family's heart out. Then Lori's sister, Summer Shiflett, took the stand. She told prosecutors that she believed Lori when she told her the children were safe. Did that change? Yes. Why? I felt lied to and my trust in my sister was broken. Prosecutors played a jailhouse phone call between Summer and Lori after the children's bodies were found. This phone call is painful to listen to. Summer is screaming at Lori. Toward the end of its case, the prosecution put on Lori's former friend, Audrey Baratero. She delivered some of the most damning testimony of the trial. She threatened to kill me. Okay. Did she say how? Yes. She said that she would cut me up. And something about that she wasn't in the mental place to do that, but that she would get herself in that place to be able to do it that she didn't want to have to because it'd be so messy and there'd be so, so much blood <laughs> and then the bleach and something about trash bags and that she would bury me worse. She would, where no one would ever find me. Audrey Baratero's testimony is critical because this is a first-hand description of Lori being ruthless with the threat to kill her. This is the first time anyone in Lori's group of friends really described her as being capable of killing. On cross, the defense aggressively tried to discredit Baratero's testimony. So you now want the jury to believe that even though you previously testified under oath and nothing of this sort was talked about, that you come here today and say you are so scared, that's why you didn't previously testify about it. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. It's overruled. What was your question? You want the jury to believe that you did, just didn't make this last crap up? I did not make it up. After 60 witnesses and four weeks of testimony, the prosecution rested its case. The defense declined to call any witnesses. Your Honor, after consultation with my client, we don't believe the state has proven its case, so the defense rests. Each side would get a last chance to persuade the jury in closing arguments. On May 11, 2023, defense attorney Jim Archibald stood before the jury and argued for his client's innocence. Who is Lori Vallow? What happened? Where did it happen? When did it happen? Why did it happen? That's what you've been asked to figure out. Archibald painted a picture of Lori as a devoted mother, someone not capable of murder. 
He pointed to this early testimony from Lori's sister, Summer Shiflett. I think Lori was a loving mother and Tylee adored her mother. Were you ever concerned about the safety of Tylee around Lori? No. Would you ever imagine your sister wanting to kill her kids? No. He also directed the jury to this testimony from Lori's son, Colby Ryan. He said, my mom has spent her whole life protecting us kids. Yes. After she met Chad Daybell, she changed. I don't remember, but yes. You never once thought your mom would hurt someone. Is that fair to say? Yes. Archibald argued that there is no evidence tying Lori to the murders of Tylee or JJ. And he said that hair stuck on the duct tape used to wrap JJ's body means nothing. Lori was raising JJ. JJ was living at Lori's house. The defense can easily argue that that hair could have gotten on JJ for a hundred reasons, none of them having anything to do with murder. Instead, Archibald shifted the blame towards Lori's husband, Chad Daybell, and her brother, Alex Cox. Remember all the GPS data? Lori's not in the backyard when Chad and Alex are. She's not there. There's not one smoking gun that ties Lori to any of these murders. And in order to explain Lori's lies to the police while the children were missing, Archibald suggested that Lori was manipulated by Chad. How can someone have that much control over you? Reason and common sense just go out the window sometimes when religious principles are involved. Lori sees Chad as if Chad is Jesus. Chad sold his spiel to Lori and she bought it. And about Tammy Daybell's death, the defense questioned whether that was even a crime. Was she even murdered? Is it a natural death? All they need to do is raise a couple of questions in a couple of the jurors. But prosecutor Rob Wood would get the last word. Lori's lies tell us she's guilty. The innocent don't need to lie. The guilty lie. Don't let Lori pin this all on one other person. She was 100% involved in this. You must convict her. When the case went to the jury, they deliberated for seven hours over the course of two days before returning with a verdict. The court shared video of Lori Vallow Daybell as she learned her fate. The defendant would please rise. In regards to count two of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Kylie Ryan? Answer, guilty. In regards to count four, the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow? Answer, guilty. In regards to count five of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell? Answer, guilty. Guilty on all counts. Lori appeared emotionless. She will be sentenced at a later date. As JJ's grandparents, Larry and Kay Woodcock exited the courthouse, the crowd outside greeted them by singing JJ's favorite song, We Will Rock You. We will, we will rock you. Larry Woodcock had been playing the song while awaiting the verdict. Love always wins. JJ, I love you. Papa. Papa wish you were here. Tylee, Papa loves you. Tammy, you are part of our life. My heart hurts for these three. This is what this has been all about. Why, Lori? Why, Lori? Why? Power, sex, and greed. For what? For what? Thank you.
It's been nearly four years since the world lost Tylee, a freckled-faced teenager, her baby brother JJ, and Tammy, a mother of five. We'll never know the lives they would have gone on to live, but we do know what they left behind. Happy family. Their smiles, their laughter, <laughs> their grace. An intruder came into her house and attacked her, stabbing her repeatedly. A woman's iron will. There's no earthly reason why I'm alive. None. And the thin line between life and death. The amount of strength that goes into that is just unimaginable. 48 Hours, Saturday on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus.